Let's just experiment, see what happens. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not good at all. No, no. Hi, I'm Paul Brody in my shop again. Mitch, me, filming, making. What's new? Well, I got some packages from England. This one has size stand spring in it. It's nice and brand new, very nice. And then I got another package from England and it's got some other stuff in it. These are fork nuts that go on the top of the forks and these are quite nice, quite nicely made. So I was really hoping that with all the parts I got, we can do some assembly soon. And they sent me oil seals for the forks and this is the bag that came in. I also ordered some 3 8 nuts. These are, are BSF, I believe. And these nuts, whoever packaged them, had the nuts inside the oil rings. And these have all sharp corners on them. So it's like, well, that wasn't a good idea at all. And then I'm looking at the fork seals. And I was taught always to save the old part. So can you, can you tell that it, it's not going to work, is it? So anyway, I sent an email off to England and uh, ordered the right ones. These aren't a whole lot of money, but it says right on the invoice, fork seals. So I don't know what happened there. Anyway, that's what's new. And we are working on the, on the cylinder head fixture because we're going to fix the exhaust port. So last time, last episode, we made the fixture and we switched on the lathe and it's really out of balance. So that's the first step is to add a counterbalance. Here is the fixture we made last episode and we got the head mounted. It's not running true, but you can see how, how the boring bar is going to be used in there. So I'm just going to switch it on for a moment. This is not high speed. This is like medium speed and I want you to watch. Well, it's going to vibrate. Things are going to move. You can see, I think you can see how the whole lathe is moving. So what we're going to do, this is obviously the heavy spot because this is on the bottom. It's off center. So we're going to do something like this. I took a piece of half inch, half inch flat bar. You see I've marked three holes. They're not drilled yet. That is going to get welded on there. And then I got some metal here and I can bolt it on and I can change position of the holes. We're just going to experiment, see what happens. Okay. This is all offset from the center. So I'm putting this over. I'm going to weld that on right, right there. So it's, it's offset this way a bit because this offset will offset the offset over here. I'll tack it, then I'm going to put my gloves on, I promise. Okay, we have added on this piece here. So this in itself is a counterweight. I'm going to switch on the lathe. Let's just see how the shake factor is again. Okay, so yeah, it's still shaking. So we're going to add this guy. This is the, I just grabbed these out of a box. Why don't we try this one in the farthest position? This is basically R&D where you're figuring stuff out. In the bicycle company that I used to work at, at Brody Research, I'd get mail quite often and they'd say, I'd like to apply to your R&D department. I mean, and I'd say, oh, you want my job, do you? <laughs> so of course, no one ever got hired for R&D because I have to keep something for myself. All right, so that goes around. So here's another, here's another shot. Let's see. Well, that was one counterweight. Let's try the other one. No, it 
that's not good. What I did when I was working on the Excelsior heads and I, and I had to balance them, I, I have a long bar and I have a wheel balancing stand and I put it on, on the wheel balancing stand and, and because the bearings are so low friction, it automatically goes and that's how I used to balance. So maybe we have to do that here. This is what I use for Excelsior flywheels when I'm, I gotta balance them. So that's more or less the middle. I know we're going to use the four jaw chuck and move this over, but this will get it. This will show us basically how out of balance it is. Okay. See how these have almost no, no friction in them whatsoever. So silly me, I was adding, I'm adding weight here and I should be adding weight here. Can you see that? Let's just see something. Let's just see what happens if that went like that. Okay, so let's see what happens. That's not bad. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld I'm going to weld this piece on but first of all I'm going to, I'm going to drill a hole through here so that I can add on a counterweight if I want. Okay. That's not going to fall off now. Okay, this is this is test run number five, I don't know. Okay, here we go. So we'll take this out, put on the four jaw chuck, and we'll take it from there. Okay, checking balance. So let's see what happens. See how it cuts if there's vibration. What I wanted to show you here that on the exhaust port or intake port, it's always about the flow. Can you see all this? See the whole way around in this, there's a huge gap. Very bad. So when we make an insert, we want the insert to go right up to that shoulder. So that there's just a nice smooth flow of the exhaust gas. So let's see what we can do now. That's what's left of the tube. That came out quite nicely. That's what I was machining. And I knew that at some point it would break through. So on our channel, we have had a breakthrough. <laughs> so what I need to do now, I need to bore this out until it's nice new metal. Then we have to make the thread. See the old felt pen trick? This, this tells you where it's cutting now. Okay, I think we're just gonna leave that like it is. I'm gonna take this out of here. I'm gonna leave this in the four jaw. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this whole, this whole assembly out I'm going to put in the three jaw. I'm going to bore this out to the same size as this. And then I'm going to cut a thread in here. And then I'm going to cut the same thread in here because when I make the insert, it's a lot easier to see if this fits on like a nut as opposed to holding a cylinder head and trying to get it 
at the right angle and everything. So we're going to make a thread into this piece next. There we go. Look at that. It's the whole assembly just come off. Okay, so one thou bigger, that's okay. Usually the thread depth is uh, maybe 20 thou, maybe a little bit more than 20 thou. So this is 36 thou larger, so that means that the thread depth would be 18 thou, because it'd be half that. So this might work, but might not. Okay, we're gonna cut some threads. When you cut a thread, you always check. So see what I'm doing here? I'm putting felt pen inside there. So first what I do is to switch on the lathe and I, I touch the tool because then I can, I can zero it or I can put the dial to whatever number I want. So we're going to take a very small cut and then I'll get my thread gauge and then we'll actually check it. That's what the red felt pen is for. So here we go. I'm checking my thread here and 20 threads per inch matches my gauge. Okay, let's uh, make a thread. We don't need this anymore. This can come out of the three jaw. We'll take off the three jaw, put the four jaw back in, and we'll cut a thread in the exhaust port. What we're going to do is to, is, is to take this out and cut a thread and see what, what happens when I cut a thread there. And then if that works, then I can, I can machine this to something like that. So <sighs> let's see what happens. I don't know. This is why I wanted this. Can you imagine I'd have to pull this all back and then try and fit the head on? That's why I wanted this. So look at that, it goes on a bit. Now we have to see if the head fits. This is the big test to see if the, if the head fits. So. Oh, look at that. 
See that? See that little bit of slop? That's fine. Okay. That's our episode for today. I hope you enjoyed it watching it. Mitt tells me he's got to go because he's out of film. I don't know if I believe him or not, but thank you for watching. We appreciate it very much. Mitch and I like coffee. If you buy us coffees, that would be great. Fuels our channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.